more than 11 years of Google IT experience. Um, most of my experience has been on Oracle Fusion middleware products and oh. Fusion middleware side, I'm more focused on a couple of products which are Oracle ADF, Oracle Web Center, and Oracle MAF, which is mobile application framework. So um, these are my expertise areas, but I have good exposure on um, integration with other frameworks from the ADF side, which are SOA framework, eBusiness suite, and uh, OEF uh, migration and BI reports integration. So those are a few more areas which I have exposure to. So that is a little bit about my technical background from where I'm coming. Um, would you like to say something about your technical skills at least? Yes, currently I'm working in uh, Oracle Forms and Reports mm -hmm. and web, WebLogic Server Installation and Configurations. Okay. And uh, Database Installations and Configurations and Database Developer. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Um, all right. So. The agenda for this demo session is um, that it will be a mixture of theoretical plus uh, practical example. So it will be almost for 50 minutes and last 10 minutes we will be having for question and answer round. If you have, I would request you to hold your questions um, if as much as possible till the end of the session because what happens most most of the question or might be few of the questions will be automatically answered during the session itself. So that is why uh, one request from my side, please hold your question till the end of the session. And um, we will be talking about the ADA framework um, from where th this framework is coming and okay. how is it making difference with other technologies what benefits we are getting from it and what are the other integration points with this framework? What is the development tool we are going to use? What is the version history of that tool? And uh, what is the licensing part? And we will also go through the various um, layers of the architecture of this framework, how the data is traveling in between the various layers in this framework from front end to back end and back end to front end. So that, that is something we will be discussing in the theoretical part. The architecture layer, which we will discuss in the theory, um, at least we will try to create one example so that uh, we can understand it a little bit more in a technical way. So one example also we can have during the session itself. So that is the agenda of this demo. So uh, I would try my level best to at least leave some picture in your mind how exactly ADA framework is working and how is it making difference. So okay. About. All right, um, so let me share my screen quickly. Hopefully you can see it now. Yes. Good. So Oracle ADF is standing for Application Development Framework, um, which is part of the Fusion Middleware family. Fusion Middleware is nothing but it's, it is the set of products launched by Oracle. Um, so apart from the ADF, there are Oracle Web Center, Oracle SOA, Oracle MAF, and a few other products present in the Fusion Middleware family. So if you are saying that you are going for the training of Oracle Fusion Middleware, that is partially true. Actually, you are going for Oracle ADF training, which is part of the Fusion Middleware family. So that is one thing about the Fusion Middleware. ADF is standing for Application Development Framework, which is coming from the background of Java and JSF implementations, because Java and uh, JSF libraries are already included in this framework to make the UI components richer in look and feel, as well as performance wise. Compared to the Java and JSF web application implementation, this framework is making little bit difference in terms of doing the rapid development. Why I'm saying rapid development? Because most of the tasks in this framework will be done in the rapid way. Uh, rapid way means declarative way where you are not needed to write much manual code Definitely real-time projects are not that much simple that everything can be done in the declarative way. 
you will also be using the programmatic way where you have to write your java logic so again the question might be that how much java knowledge is required here so java i would say the core java knowledge is prerequisite um, because the business logic which you are writing up after getting the data from the database which data you are showing to the ui there might be a lot of requirements in your project that you have to customize that so at that time you have to write the logical stuff using the core java features so core java core java is including the concepts like what is java class what is object how to create the inheritance abstract classes um, you can say the collection framework interfaces so that is those are the parts of the core java uh, the framework from the java side like struts hibernate spring those are not required because adf is already covering those features here but core java at least you should know about it so i would request if you get some time parallelly you can go through some tutorial online tutorials uh, for the core java learning but if it is not working or if you stuck somewhere then at least we can have the separate java sessions uh, which is two weeks of crash course the people who are not coming from java background generally they take it so that is the separate part that is the later part you can think about it if you are if it is not working um, you know on the java side with you but at least through the sessions um, we will try to cover as much as possible from the you know java concept wise but everything is not possible to cover from the java side during the adf training itself but still the examples will be having the java code so we can um, at least have the basic size of the exe file itself is more than 1.5 gb it seems very heavy but it is being it is being worth heavy because um the features which are provided in this tool are really um you know minimizing the work in the separate windows for example let's say the database work PLSQL developer is already integrated within this tool, J Developer tool. So you do not need to open the separate windows to manage the database operations like PLSQL developer, Toad, or uh, DB Visualizer. You do not need them because those database features are already included in it. Second example might be the server. You do not need to install any separate server. Integrated WebLogic server is by default coming with this tool. So that is again a good part. Similarly, we have more features like web service testing. You do not need to use any third party tools like SOAP UI, JSON client. Those are not required here because it is already having HTTP analyzer tool within the J developer. So these are few features, but that there are a lot uh, many more. So that is the reason this tool is a little bit heavy. But as I said, it is uh, worth being heavy because of these many features and providing the single window development so developers do not need to switch the context you know again and again for the various purpose this framework is following model view controller you can see here it is mentioned mvc design better model view controller if you are not aware of this just for your information this is a very common design pattern being followed in web application development area not only for adf but for other JSF, Java, or .NET applications, we are following the model view controller design pattern. So it is just a design pattern, the way of development, the way of architecting your product web application. We are just making the very clear separation in between these three layers, model, view, controller. What are these three layers? We keep the business logic, the logical stuff in the model layer, model project. 
and we have the separate project for view and controller where we keep the pages and um, the navigation in between the pages, the validators, the converters on the UI side that is kept into the view controller project. The good part here in the ADF framework is when you create the ADF application, by default, that application is following this model view controller design pattern. You do not need to do any extra stuff for that. As soon as you create the ADF application, by default, model and view controller two projects will be created under the ADF application. So that is the good part. We do not need to be worried about this design pattern. Why are we making this clear separation? Why do we need to create these separate projects? Because, because of the flexibility we have to provide to our web application. Suppose you are writing some business logic in the model project. You have already spent one year writing the business logic. Business logic is always time consuming process in any web development. And you have developed some um, UI components. Tomorrow, let's say somebody is saying, hey, something has uh, something better than the ADF components has arrived in the market. Let's use the that UI technology. So in that case, we are going to remove our UI components and we will replace them with the more richer components, which are latest. But why should we spend that one year on our business logic? Because that is the core business logic and it is going to be same. Our database operations, uh, like uh, procedures, functions, triggers, I do not need to change them. So in that case, your business logic still can be as it is but still you can replace the view side by replacing the newer components because you have the sep uh, separate layers and they are not having the much direct dependencies. That is why we follow this design pattern model view controller. In short, we generally call it MVC design pattern. So that is followed in the area framework also. So that is one good advantage of this framework. Okay. <clears throat> The ADF framework is the only framework which can be integrated with almost all the Fusion middleware products. So these days, people, you might have seen also, people are migrating for the good UI components from the BI reports to Oracle ADF framework so that they can at least generate the UI components to generate uh, the, the data which you are getting through your procedures, functions, using those reports, you can um, have the good UI components from the ADF side. Same thing goes with OEF. OEF was the similar framework. Again, people are migrating to ADF for the e-business suite. People are again having very basic UI components which are 15 years or 12 years older. They were using OEF framework like 10 years old, but now they are again migrating to the ADF framework with the e-business suite. Similar thing with the SOA framework. Again, you are having the web services testing, but the data which are coming it is easy to integrate with the ADF framework and just drag and drop your services and create your UI components. So saving the time plus having the richer components, those are the features people are getting from this framework and that is the reason it is this framework is getting more and more popular. Not these days, but from a couple of years now. The tool which I was talking about, JDeveloper, the tool is having the latest version in the market of uh, 12C. And 12C is again having the sub versions of um, that tool like 12.1.x, 12.2.x. X means 12.1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 12.2.1, 2.2, 1.1, 2.1.2. .1 Every version of this tool like 12.1.x, why are they having these many versions? Because as I said, this J developer is the only tool being used for all the ADF fusion, uh, sorry, not ADF, all the fusion middleware products development. Um, so whenever you are downloading the J developer tool, if you are going to use any specific fusion middleware product for the uh, implementation part, then first you need to know about the version of that particular framework which you are going to use. Let's say I have decided to go with Web Center framework or I have to um, go with the SOA framework. So first I will check that what is the version of the SOA framework I'm going to use? What is the version of MAF I'm going to use? What, what is the version of Web Center I'm going to use? Once I have decided that, then JDeveloper 
whenever I go go and start downloading it. Before that, I will have a look on the Oracle's website in the release notes. In the release notes, it is very clearly mentioned that this J developer version is supporting these these frameworks or not. So later on, once you download it, you you might need to install the extension for those frameworks in your J developer. But the good part with the ADF is you do not need to install any separate framework or sorry separate extension in the j developer tool every j developer version whether it is 11g or 12c whatever version you are downloading adf is the only framework which is by default coming with the j developer tool so that is again the good part here all the required libraries and references which are needed to start the development already coming with the JDeveloper tool. You just download it, install it. Installation is also pretty much straightforward. Just double click on exe file, next, 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 finish kind of job you need to do. Once it is installed, then you are ready to kickstart your development with the ADF framework. So that is the good part here. ADF is available with all the JDeveloper versions. Whatever version of the JDeveloper you are downloading, the same version of the ADF will be associated with that. All right, so that is one part from the J developer side. <clears throat> the licensing part. Oracle ADF framework, when you download this J developer tool on your local machine, all the ADF components are available in that for the free usage. Free usage, you do, don't need any license from Oracle for that purpose. You can use those components, build your web application, deploy on the logic web logic server, which is local one, or might be stand also outside of the JIT developer. You can install the server and you can deploy your application. That is also fine. But the servers are having the specific version production and non-production. When you install some server and you create some managed server in any of the application server and you choose the option production environment, or let's say you are going on the cloud, which is a production environment, there ADF components will not be supported. You need to purchase the license from Oracle side. So for the personal usage, for the doing the POC locally in your organization, ADF framework components are totally free. But for the production environment or going on the cloud, you need the license, definitely. So licensing cost might be different from per server, per cluster, per user basis. So Oracle is having, uh, you know, a couple of sets of those <coughs> licensing uh, offers. So they are coming in bundle actually with ADF, how many other frameworks you can bundle them like Web Center and ADF, SOA and ADF, something like that. So they have bundles, so it is part of the licensing when you are going to purchase them. Otherwise, there is one more free version of the ADF, which is called Essential, ADF Essentials. ADF Essentials is nothing but few of the components can be used freely on the production environment also, but not full components. For few of the components from the ADF side, they are free to use. You can develop your web application using those components if it is fulfilling your requirement and you can do the deployment even on production in uh, you know without any licensing cost so that is one smaller version of the ADF framework available on the oracle's website you can go with that also <clears throat> but those uh, there are limited access to the ADF components few of the components you can use okay so whenever you are going to um, learn something new um, whether it is a new technology, new framework, it is more critical to understand the architecture of that framework. So that is what we are going to discuss now. The purpose of the web application almost is same with all the technologies or frameworks. The purpose is we are getting the data from the database and throwing it to the UI. And vice versa, we are updating something from the UI and storing it back into the database. That is the whole purpose of all the web application in the software industry. But when we are getting the data from the database, the data might be traveling through the various layers in between your framework. 
might be validations, converters, or some business logic. So how that data is traveling, what are those various layers in between before reaching to the UI from the backend side? That is something important to understand for the developer. Then only we can understand that uh, how to, which are the places where I need to write the business logic, which are the places where should I put the uh, binding of the components, where should I put the actual UI components. So this diagram is pretty much straightforward diagram, which is talking about all the layers, possible layers um, of the ADF framework. So you can see the ADF framework is basically having four layers, view, the top side view, controller, model, and then we have business services. These are the four layers. The fifth layer, which is the uh, lowest layer, data services, is the common layer. It is not part of ADF. It is the common layer where we have some database established. So database can be Oracle, DB2, Mango, MySQL server. So all, almost all databases are supported with ADF framework. So you do not need to be worried about that. Now on the database side, generally we have, uh, we as a developer, we make sure that our data is ready or not, schema is there, table space is there, everything is up to the mark, then the first step should be that define your database connection to gather the data from these database tables into your business components. Now in the business service layer, this is the very first layer as a developer as, and specifically the ADF developer, I will be making sure that my business components are ready or not. So here, there are a couple of examples mentioned, like you can write the Java code to establish the connection to database system. You can write the EJB, which is again coming from Java background, enterprise Java means you to make the connection with the database. BA, BAM is coming from SOA framework, business analytics monitoring, web services, which are platform independent, they are not coming from any specific framework. Web services itself is a framework which can be integrated with ADF, MEF, or SOA. Right? So those web services also can make the communication um, to the database systems. BPL is again coming from SOA framework. BI, uh, you know it very well. Business intelligence reports can make the connections to the database. Portlets are coming from web center framework. So all these are fusion middleware product examples which can make the connection to the database systems. But if you are using ADF framework, it is strongly recommended that you should use ADF BC. This ADF BC is standing for business components. You can write the Java code in ADF framework also, but that is not recommended. So first of all, you should go with the business components. And in, in the business component side, we have three business components at the root level. And those three business components are entity object, view object, and application module. I'm just repeating entity object, view object, and application module. So two names are looking similar. Um, those are sound similar entity object, view object. And both are doing what? They can be dependent on your database table. They establish the connection and uh, make they can gather the data from one of the database table or multiple database tables. Entity object is responsible to do the DML operations, which are many data manipulation operations, CRUD operations, create, read, delete, update. View objects can only read the data, but they can throw your data to UI also. So there are a lot of other differences available, but this is not the right time to go into the depth of each and every feature. So let's try to understand it conceptually so that we do not lose the context here. The third one, which was application module, and it sound a little bit different from um, an entity object and view object. The responsibility of the application module is only managing the transaction data. So transaction handling is done by the application module. Uh, for example, commit, rollback, starting the new transaction, handling the existing transaction, that will be the responsibility of application module. So these three business components will be working together in the ADF application to establish the connection with database, gather the data, firing the queries, and 
have the data. The good part here is with the business components, they have their own cache memory. Once the data has been loaded, the data can remain inside the cache memory. Next time when you need the similar data or you want to do the sorting, filtering of the data, you do not need to fire the queries again from the database because that might be a little bit heavy operation. So you already have the data into the cache memory. You can just go ahead and filter sorting. That will be much faster rather than getting the data again from the database. So that benefit will be automatically done, but still, you have those configurations. You can tell your business components that this time you need the data from cache memory or it should be fetched from the database side. So it is up to the developer. They can make these settings dynamically. So that is again a good part. You can tell your business components here this time get the data from database table or from the cache memory itself. Now, once you are ready with the ADF business components, ADF framework is providing one very powerful feature, which is called data control. It is not mentioned in the diagram, but technically when we use the J developer tool, it is created there. The data control feature is nothing. You can drag and drop these business components directly to the top layer. The top layer is nothing but my view components, my ADF faces. Faces are nothing but UI components, ADF components, JSF components. Both are similar looking components, only the library differences are there, but it is again suggested as much as possible. We use ADF components only for, for the bet better performance, but JSF, some of the JSF converters, validators we have to use because ADF framework is internally using the JSF features. Java server faces, but you do not need to learn this separately. It is part of the ADF. Okay, now what I said, business components can be directly dragged and dropped on the top layer and when you drag and drop this business component directly on the ui page it will the framework will give you the auto suggestion that you are dragging and dropping some attribute from the business component what type of component you want to generate whether input text output text input text with label without label radio button checkbox drop down graphical data table form what do you want to create from this business component once you select one of the component the code will be automatically generated even in the business components the query is automatically generated initially however you can modify those queries later on that is totally possible you can customize anytime those queries you can use any complex level queries in a in a join out to join in not in sub queries where clause whatever you want but at least eight to ten lines of code we have to write for the ui components they can be more also if you are using validations or some conversion so eight to ten lines of code suppose my <coughs> okay my voice was disconnected it seems for a moment right i hope the content is working fine okay cool. so business components when we are dragging and dropping UI stuff is getting created automatically. Eight to ten lines of code at an average we have for the UI components generally. So if let's say my one business components is having let's say ten attributes and ten UI components I'm creating. So ten in ten multiply by ten hundred lines of code we are writing. But the good part here with the ADA framework is we are just dragging and dropping this, and that hundred lines of code is automatically generated later on small modifications if those are required there you can do that but initially you are saving you a lot of time compared to java or gsf implementations now when you are dragging and dropping your business component in the background your framework will generate one binding layer this binding adf binding is nothing but one xml file why do we need this xml file is when you drag and drop your business component to your page, your page might be having a lot of components. Suppose I have employee ID attribute and employee ID, I have the database table, which is employee table. 
in that table i have two columns employee id employee name now the first step as an adf developer what i will do will create the business component once i create the business component let's say view object i will select the employee table both both the columns i will include into my view object employee id and employee attribute and employee name now employee id and employee name corresponding to your database columns two attributes will be created in my view object now those two attributes will be visible in the data control the feature from where you are dragging and dropping this business component so now once you are dragging and dropping on your page let's say only employee name i want to drag and drop so once i drag and drop this employee name to my page it will give you the auto suggestion that input text output text so I, let's say i selected input text input text is created but who will tell my ui component that this input text is getting the data from this view object attribute so for that reason one xml file is created in the background which is telling your ui components that you are getting the data from this view object and this view object has two attributes employee id and employee name you are using employee name and this view object is based on this database table so that is how the end to end mapping is happening so the good part is you are not creating that binding manually you can do that those are the advanced scenarios but later on you can modify the binding also we have separate types of bindings as well but ultimately it is going to be one xml file which is telling your ui components that from where you are getting the data from the business components and business components will be based on some of the database table so that is how your framework will have the end-to-end -end mapping from database to business component from business component to your ui component and in between the binding will tell that which business component is being used because in real-time project we you might have 50 ui view objects every view object has again the 50 attributes so which attribute from which view object we are using that is the work of the binding layer now the controller part the good thing about the ADF controller is it is built in. You are not going to write the code for that. In the normal Java framework, uh, if you are working on Spring framework or some other frameworks, we needed to write the annotations on the methods and we needed to tell our UI buttons that this is the method with the annotation code will be called. But here, the ADF controller is built in. You do not need to write those annotations and all. So that is the good part. We can save a lot of time. The work of this controller part, not in not only in ADA framework, but even in the Java framework, JSF, or other technologies, wherever we have the controller in between. The work of this controller is whenever you raise any event from your UI page, let's say submit event, <clears throat> you have some command button, command event, command link, command image link on your page. When you press those buttons or links, one HTTP request generally raised from the browser, web browser where your application is running. That HTTP request goes to the server where your code is deployed and you are accessing. From there, it will find out that with this button, which action is associated. It finds out that logical stuff from the method. It, that method gets executed. The response goes back to the page and it renders the response. That is whole life cycle of the HTTP live HTTP request. So this whole life cycle is handled by the controller. That is the work of the controller part. So because your controller is built in, so it is not much visible while you are doing the de development activities. But there are few scenarios where we have to modify the behavior of the controller also, but those are more advanced scenarios. During the training, there will be some implementation example where we can see that how the controller settings can be changed and in which scenario in the real time project so that is the data part but here you can just keep in your mind that controller is handling those http requests when you are pressing some buttons links from your pages then which logic is getting executed in the background so that whole stuff is taken care of by adf controller now on the ui side you can see um, we will be if you are going for adf only then we will be going for browser based applications for the mobile applications again if you uh, learn the adf first and then you go for mobile it will be a little bit easier for you but mobile is again has um, two types basically one thing is you have developed one 
ADF application and that ADF application is de deployed on some server and you are able to access it in the web browser. The web browser can be opened in the laptop, desktop, or might be in the mobile device or tab. So if you are opening the same URL, which you can see in the web browser, now you are opening into, into the mobile. That is not the mobile application. That is called just the mobile view of your application. So for that purpose, we need to do some changes inside our application code itself. We put some user agent string identification using the CSS and we check that if user is accessing this URL from the desktop or tabular device or mobile device. According to that, we set the pixels of our main page. The root element. So that is the mobile view, but there can be the mobile application development. Mobile application development for that purpose, Oracle is having the separate framework, which is called mobile application framework, MAF. The mobile applications are something which are accessing the core device features. For example, in your code, you want to access your contact details, camera, map from the mobile, all those native features of the mobile you are going to use. So there are services provided in the MEF framework which can be used and which can be implemented. But again, the binding layer, the controller layer, that will be seen in the MEF framework also. But there will be the differences. You will be, you will not be using the business components there. But ADF framework business components can be integrated with the mobile MEF applications later on. But most of the time you will be using the REST web services in the MEF mobile application framework. So my my suggestion always whoever is going to learn the MEF framework, it is always good to have some idea about the ADF framework first. And then you can go with the MEF framework. So most of the part you can correlate later on. Like Okay, this is the basic at least. <clears throat> so that is something on the UI side, which we are seeing here. Desktop application, we are not going for this training. That is again a separate training, but you can, as you can see, most of the layers are same ADF binding and business components. So if you, once you learn the ADF application development, it is easier for those developers to learn about the desktop application implementation if they want to. Now, at least we will try to create this flow where which we have uh, talked about in last 15 minutes. Let's say getting the data from database coming to the business component where my data control feature from where I can drag and drop this to my page so we can create one page and we, when we drag and drop this business component, at least we can see that how the idea framework is creating those components and getting the data on the UI. So let's quickly see that example here. So let's say I'm creating one new application, new application. This is the J developer tool which I'm using. So you might have already familiarity with this J developer tool. If not, then anyway, we will be covering this during the training. What are those menus options of this J developer tool? So that is the later part. New application. And we have to select always area fusion web application, not other applications because J developer is the only tool which is being used for other application development areas also. So, but we are going for ADF fusion web application. Click on OK. This gives some meaningful name. Let's say Ravi Khan ADF app. Something like this. This application is going to be created in this directory. That should be fine. I'm not going into the small, small menus and options right now because we quickly want to see this example. Otherwise, it will take more than um, one and a half hour or so, might be two hours, three hours to talk about each and every menu. And even it is not possible to cover within the demo session. So simply I'm going with the flow as of now, creating this ADF application. I'm not going to talk about what is package prefix, how to create it or how to create your packages, something like that. So just give, your, give the application name as of now. Click on next. <clears throat> Once you click on next, the first project, as I said, it is working on the model view controller. So two separate projects. One is model. Second one is view controller. Both will be created under the application. 
So this is talking about the first project, which is your model project. The default name is model, but if you want, you can change this name according to your choice. This project is going to be created under Ravi Kant ADF app. That should be fine. This is the read-only information you can see at the bottom. In the model project, you will be using ADF business components, Java logical stuff, XML files you will be using. So that should be fine. This is just an um, information. So just go next. In the model project, one whenever you create any Java file, yeah, for the Java files, at least we, we need one project, uh, sorry, package. Package is nothing but the folder. So model will be the name of that folder. You can rename it right now or later on also you can rename, just right click on the folder and rename it. So that is something just for the information purpose. Second project to name. This is the second project. Second project is view controller. Again, it is the optional name. If you want to change, you can do that. You will be using ADF UI components, which are ADF faces, ADF page flow, the navigation in between the pages, Java logical stuff for your pages, Java server faces, libraries, JSF libraries, JSP from the Java side. Trinidad is coming from the CSS framework to change the look and feel of the components. XMLs you will be using. So this is just, um, again, the information about the view controller features. So go next. Again, there will be one default package name view. You can rename it right now or later on. It's up to you. Next, build tool. <clears throat> build tool, JDeveloper is having its own default build tool. You can simply right click on your pages and you can deploy your ADF application to the server and you can access them. But there are third party tools also available in the market like Maven and these are the build scripting tool not only with ADF, but with Java, JSF, and .NET, and further technologies are also using the deployment tools. But again, that is the subject of discussion during the deployment session later on. This is not the right time, and even we don't need them. So JDeveloper's default build tool is more than enough for us. Finish. Once you finish it, one ADF application will be created with two default projects, model and view controller. View controller will have some default generated files here. You can see five de default generated files are there. ADF settings, ADFC config, faces config, standard config, web.xml. We do not need to spend time here right now to talk about each and every file right now. Let's start from which layer? We have two projects now, model and view controller. Let's go to the diagram. As I said, being an ADF developer, we always should start from the business service layer from the lower layer, not from the UI side. So lower layer, what do we need to create? ADF business component. And where should I create it? In the model project. So in the model project here, if I expand it, this project is empty right now. So I can right click on it and I can create new, whether entity object, view object, application module, these options are there, you can create them. But at least you need the database connection first which can be used with these business components. So the first step should be establishing your application, the database connection. With. So let's say, if you want to create the database connection, you can go to the window menu and you can open the built-in PLSQL developer from the JDeveloper. So you have the option database. This is the PLSQL developer built-in. So here you can see this is my PLSQL developer. Currently, it is showing these many applications. These are the application which are currently opened in my J developer. Each application has their own um, database connection, or you can create this connection from the J developer tool itself. That connection is at the IDE connection level. So, might be let's say um, you are at the beginning stage. You might be creating a couple of applications for the example purpose. So, as as many as times you. Um, create these applications, you need the database connection. So better you create one database connection for your tool itself. And later on, whenever you create the new application, you can simply drag and drop this HR connection. HR is the schema, which is by default coming with the Oracle database. So we can use that for the example purpose. So as of now, if you see any other application, if I expand, they have their own connection, HR connection. And if I go for Bhavin ADF HR connection, so now if I if I'm going for your application, Ravi Kant, if I expand it, there is no connection. So what I can do, 
I have alternative options. I can right click on this, right click and new connection. And then I enter all the details about my database connection, username, password, host name, SID, and JDBC port, whatever it is, and click on test connection. It should be working. But I already have saved connection here for my IDE. So I can simply drag and drop this HR connection to my Ravikant ADF app. So once I do that, your connection can be imported here also, like this. So these features are built in, in G Developer to drag and drop, which can save you a lot of time. So now HR connection is already included into the Vikant area app. I can expand this HR connection and simply see that number of tables, what is the data inside those tables. So these are the few tables coming from HR schema. So that is the good part. Now, once you have established the database connection, you can start creating your business components. New, let's say I'm going to create one view object. This is the first time pop-up. Next time it will not be coming because you have you are going to create the very first business component. It is asking you that you are going to use HR connection and these are the settings. Default SQL syntax will be the Oracle syntax. Otherwise you can choose other database type also. We are going to use Oracle that should be fine. Data type for the attributes. When you create the column attributes, let's say employee ID, employee name. So database type <coughs> can be coming from Oracle side as well as Java extended. The later discussion we can have later on also, but this is the default feature. You just need to click on OK. So these connection details with the SQL platform detail will be saved into your model project. So next time onward, that pop-up will not be there. You will see this pop-up only from the first step itself because that connection detail now has been stored into one of the file. In the left-hand side, you can see model.jpx. This file has stored that data. JPX is standing for Java project XML file. So model.jpx file at the project level, your database details are stored now, so database connection. So next time when you create your business component, this pop-up will be there. Now it is asking for the name of your view object. Suppose I just want to get some employee data. So I can create employee view, something like that, view object. Now we have the further types of the view object. Again, this is not the right time to talk about each and every type in detail. Suppose I'm going with the SQL query based view, which can read the data from database table. Go next, your view object is going to be created now. This is the place where you can write the query right now, or you can open the view object later on and you can come to this place and you update this query anytime. So here it is your choice, you write do that system schema or other otherwise any other schema so once you select that schema you can click on the query button to scan all the tables from the hr schema click on query button now it is scanning the tables these are the tables i have from the hr schema so suppose i am going to use employee table now from the employee table i have these many columns you can see employee id first name last name email phone number
It is my choice. Now I drag and drop one of attribute at a time, or I can drag and drop whole view instance on the page. So let's say all the attribute from the view object I want to show. So I can drag and drop whole view object on my page. As soon as I create this element, I, I drag and drop this element. Auto suggestions will always be there from the framework. Your framework is that much smart; it can identify that what data type you are dragging and dropping. According to that, it will be showing the number of components, whether it is ADF form or you can see ADF table or single selection, which is drop down or group radio button, a navigation part or any graphical component. So let's say I just want to display all the employee data using the ADF form. So once I select ADF form option. It is giving that these many attributes you are going to show now, and, co and corresponding to those attributes, you are going to create these many UI components, input text, input text. Again, your framework is that much smart. It is identifying the data type of your attributes. If they, those are varchar, then input text. If those are date, then it is creating. You can see ADF input date component. So <clears throat> these are the few options available. Like your form should be editable or read only. It is your choice. Like what type of form you want to create. So now go row navigation. This is just uh, buttons like traversing buttons. Next, previous, last to traverse your records in the form. Simply you can click on OK. Your all the attributes will be inherited on your page, and they will create full ADA form because your view object is getting the data now. Same data you have dragged and dropped on your UI page, and you can see for one input text this much of code we generally write. And your code for all the components is written here. If you scroll down, how, how many lines of code? 105. 105 lines of code you have just written in one second itself. But earlier in Java applications, we were writing it manually. Now you can imagine how much time we are saving here with the ADU components. Not only this saving time, but the component itself are very um, richer in look and feel and their functionality few of the functionalities validators converters are built in so that is good part here now once you have dragged and dropped you can simply right click on your pages using the default build tool simply click on run your application will be started it will be deployed on the integrated web logic server as i said web logic is already part of this developer tool so you do not need any separate server for that it will be deployed on the server directly now, once you dragged and dropped one more part from the data control, if you correlate with the diagram which we will, which we were discussing here, we talked about the binding file. So whenever we drag and drop any business component on the UI, in the background one binding file is getting generated. So where is my binding file? I just dragged and dropped something, right? So for the employee page, you can see one employee page dev.xml file on the left hand side in your project, it has been created. So this XML file is nothing one binding file. How can you see the binding file? Either you open this file or you can go to your page employee.gsf each page which is having the binding. Let me show you. Each page which you are creating the binding for that, you can go at the bottom, you can see the bindings tab. At the very bottom, you can see the bindings tab. This file will be representing which attribute is belonging to which business component here. So once you go to the bindings tab, you can see here, you just used employee ID, first name, last name, these many attributes. And all these attributes are belonging to some of the view instance. And this view object is going to be based on some of the database table. So once you click on any of the attribute, it will be clearly showing you that this attribute is belonging to this iterator and this iterator is belonging to this view object. And you can just open that view object and you can see the query section. Like this, this is having the select this, this, this from which table, employees table. So you can quickly imagine that we are getting the data from employee table. That's it. So that is how end-to-end -end mapping is happening for your pages. Now, once you your page you can see here in the browser this is how your data will be looking like so your view object is fetching a whole data from the employee table 
this is my 100 this is the first record we have the traversing button these features are built in again so you can click on next button and you can see the second record 101 or you can go to the last record 206 again go to the first record 200 similarly but you can imagine the data has been um, <clears throat> received on the ui side even you can put some validators converters lot of other stuff but still we have not written a single line of code even you can perform dml operations creation or uh, deletion of the data updation of the data from ui but you without writing a single line of code but as i said the real time applications are not that much um, straightforward that you always can have the declarative code you might need to not might but most of the chances are there you have to a uh, lot of customization on your data and you, you will be using that java logical stuff so as i said um that was my at least uh try to give you at least some picture about this framework how exactly it is working and you can correlate this stuff and you know how the data is traveling what are the layers how the development should be approached and all so uh, i hope at least it did make little bit sense to you you might have few questions as well so it is the time please feel free to ask now you told that it is a project already integrated in this sorry what is that hello yeah it is mentioned that web logic server already integrated in this exactly if i am deploying in the web logic server mm -hmm. you separately you can uh, deploy on that yes the only condition in that case is you can deploy your adf application not only web logic server you can install the web logic server separately on your machine or any other machine in the same network plus the glassfish glassfish application server jboss websphere almost all the application servers are supporting the adf application but if you are not using integrated web logic server the only difference will be you have to install the adf libraries on those servers and for that purpose adf is providing one utility if you search on google it will be coming there it is available on uh, oracle's website itself freely downloadable that is called oracle adf runtime once you download yeah. so once you download it this is the exe file it will ask you the server address on which server you want to install these libraries just give the path and domain name of that username and password click on next next finish your all the required adf libraries will be installed on that server and then you can deploy your application so you can use in the same code in the uh, Java server also. Yes. Okay. Anything else, yes. Ravi? No, it's okay. Because most of the uh, because I'm also working in the J developer and Java server. Mm -hmm. Because web logic and Java. So uh, it is how much flexible to use the SQL server with this? Um, SQL want... server at the backend side. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is totally supported. You can use that. Because if I want to transport the data using web services and all, it is. It is feasible. It is feasible. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. All right. I think we can end the session, and uh, I will let you know the uh, later. <clears throat> okay. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, Ayat. Yeah. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.